this research into organic light emission diodes. So, OLEDs are photon layers, shown a chin about. So, the cathode is where electrons, negative charge carriers flow. They flow into the ETL, electron transport layer. Holes, or uh, positive charge carriers, flow from the anode down to the HTL, or the hole transport layer. When they meet in the middle, it's the emission layer, and they emit light. So, homo and lumo are important for already heat protection. High lumo molecules would be good at HTL material, and low homo materials would be good at ETL. So here, I've run some simulations using Orca, which is what we're using to um, test the two molecules we've been given. TMEPA and TYPB. So this is the neutral singlet of TMEPA, and this is the neutral triplet of TEMEPA. And as you can see, the spin is three here, and the spin is one here, and the charge is zero as a neutron. But you can see the difference in energy. Five minus five four three eight nine eight kilocals per mole. And minus five four three seven nine seven one kilocals per mole at one step. This one here is the uh, cation. So the cation's energy is minus five four three eight three two kilocals per mole. As you can see, a charge of one plus one, and a spin energy of two. So we go back, showing the basic outputs. So first of all, you need your advanced options on, because if they're not, you won't get anything to do. Geometry optimization. I set the coordinates to Cartesian, so I'll do the anionic uh, form of TMEPA now. So we've got to choose file, we go to cut MP anion, upload, from that, make the charge down to minus one, keep the spin to two, gotta get rid of this, there we go. Let's check the energy, we're on a density functional theory test. Uh, that's the potential, that's the basic set. We turn the geometry relaxation off, all these are off, everything's good. We simulate. Run the simulation. Boom. So now that is minus 543941 kilocals per mole for the anionic sound. So, yeah. so as you see here, I've already run both of them and got all the made it graph uh, graph a table to look at. This is cut PV. So it's a benzene ring attached uh, to a benzene ring on the left as you look at the drawing and a pyridine ring on the right as you look at the drawing. So that. So the difference in energy between the singlet and triple states for this is 71 kilocals per mole. Less for the singlet. So the singlet is going to be the most stable. So it's going to be the preferred ground state for this molecule. It's electron affinity and then an ionization energy here. So I run the singlets because obviously it's the it's the state that's going to be the most. So I run the singlet for the homo and lumo, and these are the values I got. Done the same for cut MEPA. <coughs> so the energy difference in single trip state again was in preparation of the singlet by 73 kilocals mole. So it means the single can be referred to ground state, so run it again. So from this, uh, the, these values, uh, I'm finding that the T and EPA would be the preferred HTL, and the T and PYPB would be the preferred ETL. So now we're going to run our BMD of these. So what we do is we upload. Uh, cube file. So we go to the files, we find the dot cubes, which I know so cleverly. Yeah. So we'll do the Lumo first. Of, uh, we'll do PA, we done PA first last time. Open, you load it. Now that's there. We go to this, we've got the graphics, change the representations, add a rep, we set the add to a color ID. We'll keep this as blue. We form an isosurface. Uh, 
we change this to solid surface and we change this value we we'll change the first value to 0 0.05 and we we'll go to this we do the same with that we change the and we change this to solid so make sure it was and we change this to minus 0 0.05 and we add that Okay, so we have that, to the side there, and there, okay, solid. I'm just going to change this one to have a different colour, we're going to have orange, so we can see the different functions. So here, we can zoom in, and we can look at what we've got with the different orbitals, and we cut the PA. This is the HOMO for the cut MEPA. This is the LUMO for the P, uh, TN, cut TN, PY, PB. And this is the HOMO for the cut TN, PY, PB. This is the second part of this lab, uh, also known as steered molecular dynamics. Steered molecular dynamics is very useful, especially when we're dealing with uh, protein structures. So alpha helix and beta beta sheets are super abundant. Uh, they're pretty much very common in all the protein structures. So the NH uh, groups and the CO groups in the, the uh, peptide backbone H bond together. Uh, this then forms the he alpha helixes to uh, twist on itself singly and this that stabilizes it every fourth residue. This is um, going to be a structural analysis of uh, bimatin. This is a protein that's used in cell structure. Uh, this is the structure of it here, it's just a brief structure. Uh, this tail is where the alpha helix stretches. So it has many uh, structural properties that allow it uh, to function. It's, uh, it can unfold when strain is applied to the cell. So, as you can see this pic with the tail, if stress is placed on the molecule, it can untwist the, al the alpha helix slightly to, it's uh, sort of like a, yeah, like a spring uh, in uh, a car, you know, your, your suspension is a spring. So, steered molecular dynamics is a simulational method of molecular dynamics, uh, dynamics. So, this allows strain to be applied to molecules, it's very axis dependent, so as shown in this picture here, I can fix the atoms here and put uh, force here and this, it'll pull the molecule as it would in real life and this uh, can, is great for showing uh, how they will react and, uh, at molecules and protein, proteins and molecules and molecules will react under force and strain. So there will be around, the, around this molecule and the, 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 the vimatin structure will have water molecules around it interacting with, with the uh, structure itself. So I'm going to go through these now. Uh, so you upload the file. So first of all, you need the initial geometry file, which is ten uh, one PPB. You upload that, and you've got the initial geometry. Now you've got the structure file, and the structure file is the PSF file. So we've got the Vimitin PSF open. Now we need to go to the fixed atoms file, which is the fixed file. So it's fixed.pdb. So we upload that. because it's already uploaded sorry um, okay I've already uploaded but I just sorry that's went throughout the show okay so then you go to the parameters you need to fix atoms set it on because that's the point that'll be fixed go to the SMDM parameters I've lowered the velocity it was higher I've lowered it down it was this I do believe no zero yeah so I'm dropping it down to 0 0.05 because this will save a lot of the time so we put in the movement along the X axis so that's where the spring force will be applied so 
it's along the x-axis so it'll set up there the data was uploaded for that I'll, I'll show that sorry so here you go to the uploaded file um, and you upload your SMD uh, yes file SMD file there, so that that would you be would upload here, but it's already uploaded, so I'll leave it. Um, so simulation plan does. So you go to this, you upload, and from this you upload the parameters. So you choose file, parameter, open, upload. So that's done. So now temperature. The average steps, DC frequency is all fine. This is where you change the number of steps. I'm going to run the 5000 first, that'll be the quickest. So you run simulation, so you run it. Then you download the file as a VMD movie file, you download it here, and it, it loads. I've already done all these, but if I've just shown the steps I've gone through. And then to go back to the parameters, and then you, also, you change the steps to. 10,000 and then 100,000 and you run them each individual time um, you need to also do one along the thing so you change that to one along the z-axis and this at zero and then you run 100,000 at that okay, so if we go into VMD okay, so we go to VMD we've got the file New molecule, the browse, I have saved them in So these are zip files. So you open the individual zip file, so I'll do the 5000 first. You open, you put the PSV in first, you load it, then you go, you click on the molecule, you put the load data into the molecule. And now you've got the DCD file. And you load. And now you've got your stretch in. And that, you can see that stretch, it pulled it along. So if I zoom out a bit, you can watch that again. So we can set up some representations. We create rep. We go to name. We go to secondary structure. We go to new cartoon. And then I'll see you can see it run through. So this is at the point, and then the alpha helix stretches out. Now you can see the water molecules that are surrounding it having a bit of trouble keeping up as it's pulling through, but that's because it's a lot of steps. So now we load our next file, our 10,000 steps. So we open it, we select our PSF file again, we load it, we put it here. We go to load it into the molecule, browse with DCD file. Once it's opened, loaded, it's fine. Now, if you saw that, that was a lot more crazy. And that is just due to that there's more steps, the, water, the molecules are falling behind, having a more, lot more trouble keeping up, and the alpha helix is getting stretched a, a lot more. So, if I just need to this a second, because so if I go new molecule, we'll show the 10,000. And then we add the VCD, which gives the frames. So obviously, that is torn and pulled the water molecules completely away. They're having a lot of trouble keeping up with it due to the fact that it's moving so fast and there's so many steps and so much torsional pressure on it. Can finally upload the uh, 100,000 set uh, Z axis file. 
So I open up the file that was downloaded running the simulations I showed before. Open the PSV, a PSF file, and I adjust the molecule to add the frames. I take the molecule from the DCT file, open, and I load. As shown there, let's create it pulls away. Now what's happening with all of these is that when, with the X coordinate at the point, the alpha helix is getting pulled in the same direction as the water molecule. So the water molecule is a hydrogen bonding to the, uh, uh, the protein structure and the alpha helix. So they're chasing it and also the more steps it's pulling it far, further and further and further as was seen with the others. So at 5,000 steps, they, they fall away, but they just keeping up. 10,000, they fall away, and 100,000, the alpha helix just pulls away, and the water molecules can't keep up. But with this, when you change the orientation and have the Z orientation instead of the X, the actual uh, alpha helix pulls completely in the opposite direction of the water molecules. And the water molecules are up here, and the alpha he helix gets ripped down out the plane from them, if, 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 for want of a better phrase. So the alpha helix actually pulls down and comes away from the water molecules at a massive rate and the, the hydrogen bonds, so hydrogen bonds are relatively strong but they're not covalent or ionic, they're not super super strong, they're, they can be broken and that's what's happening here. It's been my presentation, thank you.